Hello and welcome to a brand new podcast. This is definitely to do with E3. Lots of leaks and stuff coming out. Lots of future games happening. So lots of rumours and stuff as well. Cannot wait for E3 this year. So this is a podcast purely based around the whole of E3 and just talking about games, which is what we love. So hope you enjoy. If you want to see more podcasts like this, hit the like button. This does take me so long to like put together, obviously record it and then edit and put video on it and stuff. And then render on, obviously upload. It takes me absolutely forever to do it. So hope you enjoy it though. And yeah, if you want to see more podcast lists, hit the like button. Also, we're planning on putting this on to iTunes uh, very, very soon. So um, hopefully next week, fingers crossed, because this one was obviously quite long. So I do understand watching on YouTube can be a little bit, um, a bit of a pain. But yeah, hope you enjoy this podcast anyway, and hopefully it'll be up on iTunes soon and continue. Today is a really exciting show, I think, for both of us because we're talking yeah. about E3. A lot mm. of leaks have already happened. There's some great new games that have been um, kind of unveiled, whether intentionally or unintentionally, and we're going to be covering all of them. Uh, first off, though, let's talk a little bit about what we have played thus far in the past seven days, and I'm most curious, Scott, um, mm. about your experience with the future of gaming. Well, the Oculus, Oculus Rift. I can't. I think it's not bad to say it properly. The sometimes. Oculus Rift. There we go. You, you um, just got it. Yeah, I got it just today, so I don't have much experience yet. But from what I've seen so far, it's it's not perfect, but it's it's definitely a sort of step in the right direction. It feels like one of the most immersive experiences. It does feel. It's hard to explain, like without actually having it on top of your head, on on your head. Um, but generally, what I've, I've seen so far has been quite impressive. It's it feels really immersive. Once you got like a headset on and you got your headphones in, um, the only thing so far the hardware seems a little bit difficult to sort of perhaps get right for the PC and it's well, those wires and stuff. And it's like, yeah, it's just like a bit annoying. But does it really feel immersive? I mean, I've heard lots of people say, "Oh my God, you put it on, you feel like you're in this world." Like, but straight like man to man, me to you, mm -hmm. ghost to game. Is it really <laughs> as immersive as they as they sell it? I personally think it is. I mean. Well, perhaps not as much as they're saying, but when okay. I'm when I'm getting in, I was like, if I stand up, I get like, I was playing this roller coaster game, and it's you, you feel like you're, you, you get like motion sickness almost. You get that sort of feeling where you're actually on a roller coaster and you get upside That's down. That's pretty cool. It does. Obviously, you don't have like, the wind in your hair and stuff, and it's not like right. it's not real, but it's just that next step, I think, in the way we sort of look at video games. I don't think it's, it's I think it's still a very niche product still, though. In my in my opinion, I think it's not. Yeah. It's like, I, 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 don't know. I think it's going to be hard to integrate like regular controller games. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how many demos you've played with it, but it seems like, oh, if we're going to play a, a let's just pick a complex controller game like NBA 2K um, or Madden. Um, and perhaps those aren't the best choices for Oculus, but just in the sense that they require a lot of button presses, a lot of multi, you know, motions going on with your hands. I just feel like that immersion on your eyes is going to sort of, take you away from your hands and then mixing them both together H have there been any demos that really do that or is it mostly just visual experiences well you got like mirror's edge you can run in can't you and stuff like that and you've got to use a controller for that okay so that's true i want to try that out at some point um but it takes you got to like mod it and stuff and i like, like it to be like direct support for like for through steam and perhaps xbox one could try and hook up with it in some way maybe in the future who nice. knows that'd be nice as well to really make it a more of a mass market item. I think the next one coming out is... I think it's got, it's got two full HD screens in your eyes, on your okay. eyes, which is going to be good. And it just seems like it's going to be stepping up every time. And, yeah, it's, it's weird exciting. to me, like, how, how much it's in the mainstream press. You know, Facebook bought yeah. it. It's like a yeah. really major worldwide story. And you have Sony talking about Project Morpheus. We assume Microsoft has something VR-related as well. And yet, the device itself is still so still so alpha i'd say like if you look at it form right. factor wise it's nowhere near like a mass market product yet it, it's mm -hmm. bulky it's big it almost looks like you're wearing like mining goggles or something like it does look quite funny and uh, and then the, my video it's terrible the setup is is a little bit complex and mm -hmm. tweaking things like it's just interesting to me that there is that um that gap between like where people kind of talk about it going and where it still currently is it feels like it's still very early and at least a couple five years away from getting to like hey this is just as viable as an xbox or a playstation i reckon it's going to be i think it's going to be less than that i think it's going to be two years max oh, do two okay. three years yeah i think it's that far especially with this next one coming out i think in july i think that's really going to start stepping forward and people are going to keep looking at it i mean i think it's always going to be quite big because it does have two massive screens inside the actual right headset they have it's to have that be, size and it's probably going to have wires as well which is a bit annoying i like it to be wireless but 
I don't think that's going to happen in the near future. Do honest. you think for for people like average mm -hmm. Joe that but walks into Best Buy, you know, there, there's kind of that whole deal of like people don't like wearing 3D glasses, and and even those still you can see the world around you. Do you think this feeling of like being totally immersed, while in some ways it's very beneficial, it makes games seem more lifelike. At the same time, it sort of can be creepy or almost take you out of your living body experience. Do you think that's going to be a negative for them or, or for the average non-hardcore gamer consumer? I think it's always going to be a positive. I mean, I, I keep bringing it back to almost like a sort of the 3D, where 3D sort of failed. I think this is the next step, and I think people are going to be just more immersed in this this world where you just put a headset on and you feel like you're actually that, that, that character, which is... I don't know. It's, so you think even though 3D fell, like this is a big enough step above yeah, that that it has a chance to be successful? 3D fell because it was, it was. I don't know, more of a fad, wasn't it? I think this is more of a, a more of a thing that's gonna be good for, to purely for gaming. It's gonna okay. focus on gaming. It could be other things as well, but I think it's purely based around the whole gaming sort of network. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to see where they go. I will admit it's a little bit. It makes me a little nervous, like donning the goggles and sitting in this like mm -hmm. world and you get lost and you come out and then you're like a zombie but i know that's that's a little far-fetched but we'll, we'll have to see where it goes um in terms of things that are here today and now i've been playing um a lot more of child of light and we touched oh, yeah. on that last week a little bit but i actually i really like it um mm -hmm. i don't think it's for everyone but i'm surprised by how much involvement there is within the combat you've got this active time bar um and what i find really cool is the way that you can sort of orchestrate the battle um, to your own speed, your own pace. Uh, you, the, the enemies are going on this bar, you're going on this bar, and at the start of the battle, perhaps they're all attacking, and then you're all attacking. It's sort of this them, then me, them, then me. But by slowing guys down, by speeding yourself up, you're able to sort of rejigger the entire flow so that you might get three attacks in a row. And I've had some of these brilliant stretches where I'm fighting a boss, and I'm constantly interrupting them um, over and over again and getting, you know, five, six hits all just strung together. And, like, it's a, a brilliant feeling for a game that has such a childlike, um, it has child in the title, but a very childlike graphical style and storyline to have, like, a really satisfying combat. I think it merges the two really well. I think you, I think you may be slightly further into the game than me, but... I've, so far, I feel like it's almost a bit too easy in terms of like the combat it stuff. Is, and I, it is simple. I haven't died yeah. yet. I've been, I've been pressed, okay. but I haven't died yet. Which is, it seems to be a fact. Even, apparently, even on hard, it's still fairly easy to just finish it. Well, I always think games these days are, are going towards the easy route and try and become almost like less hardcore, I guess. So the average gamer can jump on it and almost like finish it within a day or something. I, I don't know. It seems to be the way uh, gaming's going at the moment, but... That's definitely a fact. I think the poetry as well is, like I said in the last, the last podcast, is a little goofy. Yeah, it's a bit like draining a bit on me. I think sometimes, but I still like it. It looks amazing. Like we said so many times, it looks great. It looks like a piece of art moving, which is awesome for sure. And it's an interesting thing about you know games being easy. And and I always think, and I assume your response is the same that we'd say no. We want them to be more challenging and more hard, and and really push us as as gamers. At the same time, though, think of when you do die and have to repeat a 20 minute section or repeat a 15 minute section, it's the annoying, frustration, yeah. it's like, it's the worst. We've been so conditioned to just, you know, beeline right through a game. I fully understand why these companies don't put in more uh, penalizing deaths or more challenging enemies because you'd feel like this game is a, a complete jerk of a game compared <laughs> to everything else on the market. I feel like, yeah, like you say, that things are just going down that route now. And I think, if it was uh, stuff like Dark Souls actually frustrates me very, very quickly now where I just get so frustrated because I'm dying or where I'm not really used to dying this much. Exactly. Just get, it just all hits me really hard sometimes and naughty words come out of my mouth and stuff, which is not good. <laughs> like if you think of Infamous Second Son and like, yeah. yeah, you can get down in that low zone. Oh, the color goes off the screen. You're like, oh, crap, I have to get out of here and, and save myself. But if you actually die, like every time I was like, God dang it. And like not throw my controller, but just be like, Ugh. like it, it felt so so much more frustrating than mm -hmm. dying in like Mario where it's commonplace to lose, you know, 20 lives on a, a tough level with these more massive games, shooters, third person platformers, kind of like infamous stuff like that. Just really, I don't know. Dying has kind of just left the scene. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I'll be interested to see if dark Souls success sets a new, at least somewhat trend for games to pursue, um, a more challenging way of, of playing and, and how we respond to that. 
Um, I, I talk think talk be... about Dark Souls though. We're, we've been hearing rumors about this this new this new PS4. Uh, is it Beast? Is it Beast something? Beast? Yes, Project Beast. Yeah. So that looks potentially like it could be a very very interesting. Seems like it might be a success. Apparently, people are saying it might be like a I said Demon Souls number two. So people apparently people's a rumor in now because it's it's going to apparently be on the PS4 exclusive, isn't it? I've been right, hearing, yeah. So. From from software, the company that has made the Souls series has a deal with Sony to make an exclusive game, um, mm-hmm. and there was these screenshots and supposedly rumors of a demo being shown to somebody uh, leaked earlier in the 